Hey everybody, it's Nick here again for Grayscale Gorilla. I am the Gorilla, and today I'm going to show you guys some fun stuff I've been playing around with today in Cinema 4D. It's called a Sub Polygon Displacement. And what it does is, uh, it, it, I like to play around with it to kind of create some abstract shapes and some fun textures. Um, and basically, I'm, I'm not a great modeler, uh, but I do like to go in and sometimes try to build different things. And what sub polygon displacement allows me to do and you to do is to screw with the, um, the texture of our objects and make different shapes out of them. Uh, so that may sound a little crazy, but let's head on in and let me show you what po sub polygon displacement does and why I think it's just so much fun to play with. So here we are in Cinema 4D uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is add a sphere, right? And so we have um, just a basic sphere and then uh, the next thing we need to do is add a texture to it. So I've just made a new texture, drag it on there and open up the texture real quick. Oh, it's way down here. Let's grab it up, pull it up. And you see we have all of our options here. We can color it and do all that fun stuff. Um, so let's get right into the displacement and show you what it does. And then we're going to go in and build a quick little scene just to make it look a little bit better. And, um, you know, make it look sexy. Because really, you know, playing around is nice and learning the tools. But really learning how to make it sexy is the fun part for me. So first things first. Um, right down here you're going to see displacement. Uh, and what what we do there is we check the box for displacement and basically this channel is going to displace our um, sphere in space right so you, you we've seen a bump channel let's just compare a bump channel let's go to bump add a noise and hit render over here and you're gonna see um, it actually um, takes the noise and kind of fakes, sorry I keep doing that, kind of fakes some bumps and crap around there, see? But what happens is if we crank the strength of this bump up and say we really want to make almost like a mountainous scape, you're going to see no matter how high we crank it, we still have a perfect sphere right here. Let me just zoom over. You can see no matter how high we crank it, we can't actually make bumps on it. And that's because bump maps are kind of a fake. Um, they don't actually displace the geometry, right? But displacement does. So let's go ahead and just copy that same noise um, channel. I'm just going to grab it, copy channel, go down to displacement, and paste it, paste channel. And you're going to see you actually get a, uh, a preview of exactly what it's, it's going to try to do. Now, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? It doesn't work because you need a, you can't use a parametric object for this. You have to use a polygon object. And the sphere, because we can still play with all these numbers, is a parametric object. We need to turn this into a, um, a just a polygon, polygonal object. And by that, we just hit hold, uh, or uh, select the sphere and hit C, right? And as soon as we do that, you're going to see we start to get some results. Now, not huge results. We can actually turn this up. So the height right here is actually going to shoot these things out further. Now, that's still not quite what we wanted to do. The issue here is that there's not enough geometry in this sphere to displace, right? So it's still displacing the the polygons as they are. What we want to do is uh, what we talked about, which is sub polygon displacement. We need to turn that on. What that's going to do is it's actually going to break this sphere up into even more and more and more and more polygons before it displaces it. And just hitting that button, you're going to see now we're getting the results we wanted, right? Um, and so now it's actually, if we back out, it's actually physically pushing and pulling on these polygons to, to make the shapes. I keep touching it and it keeps disappearing. I apologize. But there it is, right? And that, that, that's the basics. Now we have strength, so we can actually invert this. We can go to negative 100. And you don't, we don't see much there. We're going to see that a little bit later when we play with different noise patterns. But essentially, this noise pattern is looking at the black and the white values and pushing and pulling based on white or black. Got it? So let's play with some other stuff and see what else we can make. Um, but before we do, let's make this thing sexy because there is playing around with stuff, but then there's playing around with something that looks nice. So what I want to make is this, this something I've been playing around with. It's this almost perfectly black 
kind of glossy thing going on. You can see there's a preview here with it, which is nice. The first thing we do is in the color channel, we just kind of crank it almost to black. I never go 100% to black. I always leave a little bit of room and, and make sure the colors are just a little off just to make it not 100% black. Next thing we do is add reflection, and we don't want pure chrome reflection, although that may look uh, kind of funky. Um, but if we come into uh, texture and go to Fresnel, just like we do with a lot of um, uh, reflection uh, gradients here, uh, the Fresnel makes it a little bit more realistic, and we can just leave it at 100% right there. And uh, we're pretty close, right? Uh, before we uh, start to light this thing, let's add a background object. I may have to slide this over just a bit to, to find it. Here it is. I'm going to get a background object. And in the background object, I'm just going to make a new material, drag our um, texture there, open up the texture. And in the color channel, I'm going to grab gradient, head on in, and flip this to circular gradient so that the inside is going to be all white and then the outside is going to be just off white not too far down but just to give it a little bit of kind of vignette almost um, that is applied to the background and now when we render you see we have our object in the middle we have our background white to grayish and we're ready to light this puppy now it's really flat lighting the default lighting what we're going to do is we're just going to add lights around the scene really quickly just for reflections. And what's nice is we don't actually need to light this too much because it's a black object, but we just kind of need to pop things in for reflections. And uh, of course, I am going to use the uh, Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit, which uh, you know I made and uh, I use the heck out of. And if you are interested in the Light Kit, head on over to my site and check that out. You could also use, um, if you don't have the kit, uh, you can also use planes or disks uh, textured with different colors and different lighting. Um, put some luminance on a uh, on a material and add it to a disk or a plane and put those around the scene uh, to kind of recreate uh, some, some of these reflections we're going to use the kit for. But the overhead softbox and the rest of the kit makes it a little bit easier. So let's just back out and look at the overhead softbox. It's in the scene. Um, we can actually just bring this thing way down really close and look at some of the reflections it gives. Now right away we're going to have some kind of top uh, reflection-y stuff going on with our, with our uh, sphere here and with our pattern. And that pattern's a little bit too much for me. I'm actually going to go into the displacement and go into our noise and just up the scale of our pattern. What that's going to do is you could actually see it in the material here. It's just going to fatten things out a little bit. And you may notice that we're starting to get little bumps where the polygons touch. And to fix that, what usually fixes that is you come in here to round geometry. And now it's going to treat it more like it's round and less like it's uh, a sharp corner. So now what we could do is we can use um, different noise. You know, maybe that's a little too high scale. Let's just pull that back a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Now, um, some things we could do. We can fix our reflection. Head on into the reflection. Go to for, uh, go to Fresnel. There's Fresnel there. We could turn down our overall brightness way low and then go to mix strength and pull that back just so it's not as reflective as it was we don't want any hot spots oh, well, that's looking that's looking pretty good if we go to the um, overhead softbox here we can actually change the light color to just a little bit off white just so we have a little bit of push between our front foreground and our background that's actually a little bit too much you can see how subtle you could be with this there we go. Okay, looking good, but we're still losing a lot in the bottom here. What we want are other things around the scene to reflect off of so that this object kind of sees it. And for that, I'm going to use the HDR, HDR uh, Sky um, uh, kind of uh, part of the kit that is part of the light, uh, Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit. And if you come on up to HDRI Sky and add an um, HDR image, uh, in this case, I think the Softbox Studio here is going to work just fine. Uh, and you're going to see now when we hit render, we get a lot more detail in the reflections down here. We have all this fun stuff going on. But, we, of course, we don't want the background in, in our scene, so we just turn off scene by camera. And now we're back to where we need to be. Now that is some fun-looking lighting that we can now play around a little bit more with our... Um, noise settings and instantly kind of get some uh, reflections in here and try out what's going on. So let's head back to sub polygon displacement 
and try out some other stuff. Now, I'm using the noise channel to drive all this. And you can see we have a pretty nice preview up here. And if we go into our noise uh, shader, you can see we have a whole crap load of different noise uh, shaders that we could use to displace. And I play around with these constantly, but it wasn't until I discovered this little tab over here where I really got excited. And if you open up this tab like that, you actually get a preview of all of your noise patterns that that are gonna end up being on the sphere here. So we can actually go pick something like, um, you know, let's let's pick something really crazy like this, like the square thing here. And you can see it actually previews it. And if we hit render, you're gonna see it actually does this cool kind of square. I keep doing that, cool kind of square pattern right there, that kind of displaces in little chunks and squares. And we could scale that up and down and do a bunch of different things there as well. Um, so that's fun, right? We can also come into um, our, let me just shrink this down a little bit so we can move this over. We'd also come in and pick something maybe uh, more like this, more subtle kind of sharp edges. And you can see we kind of have this really crazy dirty texture going on. We can actually scale that up and maybe get a little bit less noisy. That's really cool. We could actually zoom in and get some really cool texture in there. And that's all reflections of the HDR and all the skylight and all that stuff just kind of poking around. Really fun. Um, and again, this is just something I've been playing with lately and I wanted to show you guys so you could play around too. Um, let's see what other channels we have. This is more of a kind of a chill looking uh, texture here. We could crank the scale up. Look at that, dude. That's dope. I'm digging that. Now what's really cool is we could play around here all day, but now we can actually animate this stuff, right? So you can come into your displacement and animate the strength or the height and really get some crazy displacement going on and then animate it back down, uh, animate the strength back down, like way down to almost zero. And then, you know, now you could kind of pop this in and out, which is really cool. Um, so I think you could rotate it, you know, you can't see it rotate right now, but maybe you can add like a null in there and spin it around and get some really fun kind of abstract shape things going on. And of course, if you don't like black, you could just come in and uh, make it a, a, a different fun color and you can see that it all works there as well. I'm going to stop doing that. There we go. So now we could uh, add some color to it. Uh, the possibilities are endless, frankly. Anyway, uh, that is sub-polygon displacement. The other settings, just to make sure uh, if you guys run into issues, if you need more uh, polygons to displace, like if we turn this down, you're going to see that at a certain point, it's going to kind of freak out and not have enough to displace. It's not as smooth as it could be right now. You can see there's a little, let me see if I can mouse over this without it going crazy. You can... Um, uh, see there's like some little chunks there that aren't quite lining up so if you ever see that just up your subdivision level to five or six but be careful as it goes up so does your render time and this is um, sub polygon displacement with higher poly models really can get a little bit hairy when it comes to render times but fun nonetheless uh, come on in grab your uh, noise pattern and let's just try one more before we finish out just because you know I'm having so much fun oh by the way you can bring in it, uh, a uh, a texture here. Um, uh, I'm not sure what this is. This looks like a photo I, I grabbed off the internet. We can actually pull that in and use a photo as a displacement too and see what the heck that looks like. So that's that gives us some really interesting results here. Um, that is a photo of some palm trees that we brought in and displaced and that's it. We could turn down the strength and maybe see what that looks like. Let me render a little quicker. There it is beautiful. Anyway, play around um, uh, with the displacement. Uh, if you get stuck or have any questions, drop something in the comments of this post here and we can look at it. And if you make something cool with um, with the uh, displacement, uh, I would love to see it. Uh, it's just something, uh, like I said, I've been playing with and I wanted to share with you guys so you could play with it as well. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much for watching and I uh, hope to see you guys in another tutorial real soon. See you guys. Bye.